Hello and welcome again to the Rider Review. This is Eric Karat Rider, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 2018 crime action thriller titled Sicario Day of the Soldado. Now this movie runs for two hours and three minutes long. It is directed by Stefano Salima. It is produced by Basil Iwaniek, Edward Ed, Edward McDonald, Thad Luckinbill, and Trent Luckinbill. The script was written by Taylor Sheridan. The score was done by Hildor Gwynedotter. The cinematography by Darius Wolski. And the editing was done by Matthew Newman. And the stars of the movie are Benicio Del Toro, uh, Josh Brolin, Isabella Monaire, Jeffrey Donovan, Manuel Garcia Rufo, Catherine Keener, and Matthew Modine. Now, call me crazy, but I truly believe that screenwriter Taylor Sheridan may be the best screenwriter in the modern era. It was really awesome to see him return as the writer for the sequel to the 2015 film, the original Sicario. Good to see him back. And now he's back in the sequel, Sicario, Day of the Soldado. Uh, he was the main reason why last year I was popped up to see this critically acclaimed movie and hopes that if a third installment comes out in the future, I'll surely be looking forward to that one as well. But this is not to say that all those who contributed were insignificant. Even though it was sad that Emily Blunt was missing in action and a change in direction as Stefano Solima replaces Denis Villeneuve and Icelandic composer Hildor Gwynedotter replaces the late Johan Johansson, plus also Darius Wolski takes over from Roger Deakins as the cinematographer. But they all pulled through in getting the story told very, very effectively. And sure, it's still inferior to its predecessor. There is still a high level of action and suspense that is definitely truly handled professionally. The story begins with a suicide bomber as he blows up a grocery store in Kansas City, Missouri. This alarming moment sets up a uh, personal conflict as Secretary of Defense James Riley, played by Matthew Modine, hires CIA agent Matt Garver, played by Josh Brolin, to head over to the U.S.-Mexico border, where it is to believe that illegal immigrants are sending Islamic terrorists to the country where drug cartels are coming in. So with the illegals coming into the country by a staggering rate, Garver hires assassin Alejandro Gillick, played by Benicio del Toro, to declare a war against these cartels. And how are they going to do it? Any means necessary, even if it means to do underhanded stuff themselves. Either way, this is not a battle between good versus evil, but the battle between the more or less of two evils, depending on your side of the spectrum. Their first initiative was definitely to abduct the kingpin's daughter, Isabel Reyes, played by Isabella Moner. She's one of the hot young talents out there. And to cause a bit of a distraction, which would be used to Garver and his band's advantage. But like all good things that come to plan, it often results in ugly consequences, as you would see in this movie. It can be very, very rough on the eyes, and there's no smooth sailing things that go on. There's nothing feel good about this movie at all. It's based purely on intensity, and the stakes couldn't be any higher. When watching this movie, you can't ignore the actions of the movie without acknowledging the current events that you hear on the news today, you know, about President Trump and his bid to protect the Americans from illegals coming into the country and the debate whether building a wall is a good idea or a bad one. My personal opinion, it's a bad one because, let's face it, 
I mean, he's not going to be around, probably around in 2020. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. I don't know. But all I know is when he does step down, and he will eventually, whether it be next year or five years from now, if the Democrats do get in their first order of business, to tear down the wall. And sure, the issues are divided. You also have to take into consideration of the innocent ones in this crisis. I mean, think of the children and the traumatic effect it has on them knowing that they're being imprisoned and separated from their parents. And then we ask ourselves, where are our morals and how can we even them out? With the emphasis depending more towards people smuggling over trafficking, we get a deeper look at humanity to these issues, knowing that we are not watching a feel-good movie. Moral issues are definitely put in question, and since we don't have the shining light in Emily Blunt's role, we are at a real disadvantage regarding our actions and our morals, because it all just pans out that we're doing bad no matter what. You may probably think we're doing the world of good, but in the end, we're probably doing more damage than good when you look at both ends of the spectrum. The cornerstone to the original Sicario in compared with Soldado was that Blunt could trace the faults we as humans commit, which felt like the predecessor can inject more empathy to the story, which shows that there would be more of a passage or a message of hope. Here, they go by the, we do everything in its delivery by saying that there is no hope and that the future is getting worse and that there's no point in saving human, humanity because the human race is definitely way beyond repair. Does that mean that we should just simply wipe each other off from this earth and just die out? No. But it's just that we live in a hopeless environment and a hopeless world that if we can't fix it, then fuck it. Sure, not all stories have that happily ever after mindset and that evil could prevail. But it does but the question that I ask is, does it have to be rubbed in our faces? This film is definitely truly without its share of weaknesses. In the first installment, the subplots were well woven together, which contributed to getting the story across by not leaving out making these subplot prominent issues to the main story. In Soldado, we have a strong main story and all the other important subplots are definitely just reduced as nothing more than an afterthought. That's where the big weakness in this movie comes in. Like the kid who's inspired of becoming a hitman one day feels definitely left out to the in the cold with lack of any further developing, and it gets forced by the time the film's ending. I mean, sure, this kid wants to be just like Vinicio del Toro's character and wants to one of these days become a fighter, a vigilante, a hero. But instead of emphasizing on that, it usually gets pushed in the background until the end when it becomes much more forceful in its delivery. And though I praised these contributors for their efforts in making the movie, their predecessor's absence could still be felt and dearly missed. And although Johansson will be sadly missed, at least Gwyneth Daughter succeeded in capturing the dark tones like in the first installment. You know, he, he was still trying to, to, to live up to his fellow Icelander by putting in the dark tones and working it out very, very effectively. You know. And uh, I think he did a formidable job, but it's still pretty obvious that Johansson's work was missed. However, director Solima 
and cinematographer Wolski was definitely not up to par with the brilliance in the direction from Denis Villeneuve and from the cinematography of Roger Deakins, which definitely lowers the dread and tension of the first movie. So, you know, these guys who were missing truly, truly, truly capture the spirit of the first, but their replacements were not really up to par. It did not live up. It's like the sole cliche about sequels, not leveling up to the same uh, the same productivity like in the first movie. This one is definitely truly no exception. And though it was definitely great to see Josh Brolin and Benicio Del Toro back in their respected roles, they had to go more out of the way than before, knowing too well that they depended on the more reliable crew members to get the story across on the technical side. So Brolin and Del Toro had to step ahead of themselves to get the story across. I mean, in the first movie, they were able to be a little more laid back, but here in this sequel, they had to step up their ante a bit more just to get more of a detailed storytelling, which they both did very, very effectively. Uh, this makes these gentlemen the big men on campus. It was like they practically had to direct themselves even though they were still under the superiority of the director and the cinematographer. But to get the story under full effect, they also had to depend on themselves to be kind of their own directors. In addition to that, um, a very special nod goes out to the performance by Isabella Moner for her performance as Isabel Reyes. She showed that she can handle herself well from her previous outing in Transformers. In some ways, her traits make her similar to those of Daphne Keene's performance from 2017's movie, Logan. You know, hey, she's kind of like the young girl trapped in a pretty dangerous situation, but she's very empowered and very independent, and she actually pulls off a very, very convincing performance. And though it's still definitely inferior to the original Sicario, Sicario Day of the Soldado is still very intense and carries the dark tones of its predecessors very effectively. If these films churn out great expectations, you can bet your bottom dollar that there will be a, a third installment in the future. I really highly recommend it for people to see this movie. It's not just some mindless action flick. There is a lot of provocative stuff. It also has some subtle political s stuff that's going on in this movie. And I think it is handled very well without being preachy or being too much dependent on dialogue. Sure, there's less action in this movie than in the first movie. And the body count is definitely much more smaller than in its predecessor but I still think it is still handled very well. And though, yeah, the replacements can be a little bit distracting and not really well even out like in the first movie, I still think that the replacements did just as effectively in their efforts, and I appreciate that as well. So when all said and done, if I was to give this movie a scale out of 10, I would give Sicario Day of the Soldado a 7.5 out of 10. So I guess this ends my writer review. Thank you all for listening in. If you wish to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so. If you wish to leave a comment, go right ahead. But just remember the three simple rules. Be kind, be courteous, and please refrain from any rude comments. And I will be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Correct Writer saying, keep watching those movies, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.